Our planet is a changing place. These changes were brought by climate change, the movement of tectonic plates and because of life on it. Such a life will lead to new changes, and that life is farming and animal husbandry. There is some data, but not nearly as much as we would like. For the Paleolithic environment, and we don't have a clear picture of the environment, and that's because the environment is dynamically changing. The environment changed at the end of the Ice Age. For natural reasons, there was a sudden warming, an increase in humidity. For the Ice Age, especially for that last part of the Ice Age, which was extremely cold and dry. Forests practically disappeared from Europe. You had forests only in some pockets, in sheltered places, river valleys, and so on. After the end of the Ice Age, these forests spread from their so-called refuge areas. And there is a moment when the forests expand to their maximum size. This is called the Boreal Maximum, the largest forest, and that is somewhere at the beginning of the Holocene, somewhere before 7000 BC. It should be said that these forests are not really that convenient for hunters, among other things, because hunters and gatherers primarily fed on animals that live in the steppe, who needs an open space, not a forest. And the question is to what extent they participated in the management of those forests. While when you have farmers, then the thing is clear. They need open spaces. They need fertile soil where they can grow their plants. While livestock farmers, who also need open space, on the other hand, those animals by themselves, when there are a lot of them, have a very bad effect on the forest vegetation, because goats graze young trees and others. Animal husbandry and agriculture began to permanently change the environment. A change in the environment also led to a change in the plant and animal world. A recent example of this is the change in butterflies in Great Britain during the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. The Industrial Revolution, the world of coal, steam and iron, led to environmental pollution. Soot and dirt began to cover the nature. Butterflies responded by outnumbering those with lighter wings. Darkwing butterflies were less noticeable to predators. On a dark background, over soot covered trees. Agriculture changed the plant environment in this way. Large areas of land began to be cleared dug and plowed and crops were planted on them that had to be weeded, fertilized and watered. Thus, many changes took place in plants. Favorite types of plants began to change. Larger seeds are preferred over small ones. That can be found in nature. A hunter-gatherer and a farmer look at nature and environment differently. Communities that live by hunting and gathering identify with the environment around them, and they are aware that he feeds and clothes them. Therefore, they must have complete responsibility for the environment because of their way of life. Hunter-gatherers must live with a lower population density. Their technologies are simple. This in turn limits the damage they can do to the world around them. Although it seems clear that groups of hunters and gatherers in the late Ice Age wiped out large animals in some parts of the world, the development of agriculture changed all that. Instead of living within and as part of the environment, early farmers became opposed to the forces of nature. It doesn't necessarily rain. The sun doesn't necessarily shine when it suits the farmers. Productivity can vary from year to year, which creates economic and social crises. And when people begin to feel affected by the vagaries of climate, they begin to feel opposed to nature. 
and life becomes a struggle against nature. The fight against nature changes that nature, but there is no going back. Civilizations and culture have their price, and that is changing the environment. What kind of environmental changes are we talking about? What we do know is that today, the Mediterranean environment looked completely different than it does today. All we have today is a degraded environment that has nothing to do with the natural situation. This is something that is a consequence of the long millennia of exploitation of that area for farming and animal husbandry. However, when it actually started, when this degradation began to take place intensively, is something that is still very questionable. It seems that these communities of early farmers were actually technologically quite limited, that they could not make too many changes in that natural environment. The Mediterranean environment is very fragile. Once you throw it out of balance, it is impossible to bring it back. When you remove that plant cover, then the rains wash away the soil. In this present-day karst, the extreme karst that we have in many places is most certainly the result of human activity. In fact, what we see today is a consequence of agriculture and animal husbandry, for sure. However, it seems that this actually started to happen drastically only 4,000 to 5,000 years after agriculture arrived in this area, when the population grew, and very likely with the emergence of the Roman Empire, which began to exploit that space in an industrial way. Agriculture came from the area of the Fertile Crescent, then from the Fertile Crescent, they came to Europe by ships and reached Crete and the Greek islands in the Aegean Sea. It was somewhere around 7000 BC. Then they reached the Greek mainland and crossed the Vardar River Valley to came to the center of the Balkans. Agriculture came to the area of the eastern coast of the Adriatic, around 6000 BC. Then from the eastern coast of the Adriatic, they continued their expansion towards Italy. Farmers came to Central Europe via the Balkans, first to Pannonia, then through the Danube Valley to Central and later Western Europe. Around the middle of 6000 BC, the so-called the Linear Pottery Culture developed in Western Hungary it got its name from the specific pottery found in the settlements of that culture, which was decorated with a striped pattern. The culture was given such a name by the German archaeologist Friedrich Klopfleisch. In addition to such specific pottery, the settlements of that culture were distinguished by massive long houses with a standardized design. Two or three such houses would be erected in forest clearings on the river bank. The settlement had easy access to water and arable land. This culture was influenced by the Star Savo culture, which was named after the Star Savo locality in Serbia. The forests of Europe in areas with a moderate climate had a key influence on building methods and agricultural techniques. Wood was used abundantly for the construction of long houses up to 45 meters long. These houses were usually divided into three parts. The place for living was in the central part. The cattle were kept in the northern part. And in the southern part there was a raised gallery that may have been used for grain storage. But where they came from and what language they spoke. In 1868, German linguist August Fick published a book entitled Comparative Dictionary of Indo-European Languages. It was a pioneering work in which Fick tried to reconstruct that primitive language created in distant, prehistoric times. The Indo-Europeans, as a presumed linguistic and cultural entity, 
disintegrated about 6,000 years ago in the mountains of Eastern Asia. Of that group, language remained the longest. The question arises, who are these Indo-Europeans? When did they come to Europe from their ancestral homeland, and what was their arrival like? Was he peaceful? Or did they destroy the communities they found in Europe? There is a very serious school of thought that these early farmers are the oldest Indo-Europeans. Therefore, it is something that we will probably never know. We did not have that language. It was not preserved. We will never know exactly how these people spoke. However, there is a very strong and persuasive argument that the spread of agriculture is actually the most powerful mechanism for the spread of languages and that in this spread we should see the arrival of some kind of Proto-Indo-Europeans who speak some kind of Proto-Indo-European language on the territory of Europe. Which does not mean that later some other Indo-Europeans did not enter the same area 3,000 or years later. But again, in what way did they come? What did they change? Remains unknown. What happened during those thousands of years? From the moment when agriculture came to Europe, about 7,000 BC, farmers came to Crete. It took them about a thousand years to reach the eastern coast of the Adriatic. Sites on the Dalmatian coast of the Adriatic can be dated to 5,990 BCE using the radiocarbon method. In Northern Europe, Traces of early Neolithic culture can be dated to around 4000 BC. What was happening in those mighty years? In the ordinary Neolithic life in which nothing happens, and which lasts for thousands of years and which is very rarely discussed by archaeology, because everyone is interested in that transition to farming as a big important event, and then what happens after that for 3,000 years. Nothing actually happens. People's lives are happening, which are certainly full of problems, drama, beauty, and so on. And this isn't time that we really need to be interested in. On the one hand, it is certain that during that rather long period, several thousand years, things change. However, nothing really radical seems to be happening this way of life is settling down. There are more agricultural and herding people than there were before, when they were hunters and gatherers. Changes happen, but they can go in various directions. This is a period of change in our environment. There are periods that are quite poorly known, primarily at the end of the Neolithic and the beginning of the Copper Age, and this happened somewhere between 4000 and 3000 BC. But there are still indications that the social structure of society is somewhat different. The transition to agriculture was the most important moment in human history. The result of this transition are states, cities, letters, mathematics, religion, laws and everything that we consider to be an integral part of our civilization. People played a big role in that transition Sharpness and observation helped our distant ancestors to domesticate plants and animals. But the question is, if all of this would have happened, if the change in the Earth's orbit and axis had not led to global warming, we like to think that history is made by people, and we are often taught that, but things are not that simple. Unstoppable socioeconomic forces are often the result of environmental and climate pressures, which are totally beyond the control of the societies and nations concerned. And these people, unaware of the larger picture of the world around them, were behind a large part of the booms, busts, and conflicts that make up the complex tapestry of human history. That transition to agriculture changed everything. Our way of eating, 
Our health and our way of life. It changed people's habits, changed our time and finally changed societies. All these societies are still what they would call backward. So, you don't have any kind of organized hierarchical structure. These big changes will happen somewhere. At the end of the Copper Age, probably somewhere in the middle of the 3000 BC, when we begin to have the first indications of some kind of elites, some kind of powerful individuals who collect material values. This is where metal primarily comes into play. From the beginning of the Metal Ages, in the Copper Age, weapons that were used more for the display of wealth than for fighting, and such things, large tombs, complexly built, in which there are many of these expensive objects inside, settlements in positions that seem to be primarily defensive, some possible traces of defensive buildings and things like that, but this is something that happens in the middle, or in the second half of the third millennium BC. So, a good 3000 years after agriculture came to this area, obviously, some kind of social changes are taking place. Society is organized differently. This is something that is happening all over Europe. And what brings changes in the way of life and progress of human civilization?